Okay, so it turns out that you know both of those concepts that you know as the noise level in the data goes up, get ready to switch from the complex hypothesis set to the simpler hypothesis set. As the target complexity goes up, counterintuitive, get ready to switch from the more complex model to the simpler model. So as the target complexity goes up, you want to switch to the simpler model. Very counterintuitive. Okay, now you know both of these these sort of effects can be captured with a careful definition of what noise is. Okay, and so we're going to talk about noise. Okay. And on the right, I'm showing you the definition of noise, and I'm, I'm I'm choosing my words very carefully here. Okay, so noise is the part of Y that we cannot model. Okay, and um. It's very important there to, to sort of you know, appreciate the highlighted words, the part of why that we cannot model. Now, you might think, well, why, why, why did I put Y there instead of F? Why isn't noise the part of F that we cannot model? And that'll become, that'll become clear shortly. So it's very important. It's the part of why. What is Y? Y is the observed you know, value in the data. So you have X and Y. Y is observed. Now, in the, in the noiseless case, y equals f of x. But when there's measurement error, y may not necessarily equal f of x. And so noise is the part of y that we cannot measure. And it has two sources. And that's what we're going to discuss carefully. So noise has two sources. And the first is the obvious thing, the obvious thing that we just, you know, are all familiar with, which is this measurement error. Okay. So we're going to call that stochastic noise. Stochastic. noise, aka measurement error. You might wonder, wow, okay, we have a fancy name for this. Yes, we call it stochastic noise. And you should be thinking, well, maybe there's some other kind of noise and stay tuned. Okay. So let me give you an illustration of stochastic noise in a, in a sort of uh, mathematical concrete setting. And then I'll show you an example from, from the real world. So stochastic noise. So think of, you know, the regression setting. Okay. And, you know, you have your target function, which I'm going to put in blue to be sort of matching with the slides. Okay. And, you know, you're going to generate a data point. So you generate an X value. Okay. And this is F of X. So this is F of X. This is F of X. Okay. But there's measurement error. So you don't measure f of x. You measure f of x plus some noise. f of x plus some noise. Okay. And so this is noise. Okay. Epsilon. And so in this case, okay, um, uh, y, the observed y value in your data, is equal to f of x plus epsilon, which is the noise. And what's typical about such measurement errors? They're random. Okay, so they're random. And, you know, you would much rather learn from, you know, y equals f of x. You'd much rather learn from that. Okay, but you, you only got to observe, you know, f of x plus epsilon. You're, you, you've got to observe the noisy version of f of x. And there's no way, there's nobody, you know, there's no hypothesis set that, you know, that anyone can work with that can model noise. Noise is in some sense the most complicated function that you could think of. Okay. So imagine I repeated this process for all the x's. I generated the target function plus noise. Here's what it would look like. Okay. And here's what it would look like. Okay. I might generate you know, that point, and then this point, and then this point, and then this point, and then this point. So if I generated a target function with noise, okay, it might look something like this. Okay. And you see that the, the observed y value deviates from the, the blue target function by the amount of noise added. Okay. And so in some sense, this is the y value that we observe, and there's no way for us, 
There's no way for us to model this very complicated, you know, random noise is just super complicated. There's no way for us to model that black curve, and, but it's that black curve that appears in the data. And so the, the part that we might have a shot at modeling is this blue curve, but we don't get to see that. So the data, the y value contains a part that we have no, no way of modeling. Okay, and that's what we call the stochastic noise. Okay, so this is the stochastic noise. Okay, now what happens? What happens is that maybe in our hypothesis set, you know, so let's let's now imagine we generated a data set which is, you know, this guy, this guy, you know, that guy, and let's say that guy, just to be, you know, just to be you know, concrete. Now, maybe in our hypothesis set, you know, we might be able to model the target function relatively closely. So let's say with that red, red dotted curve. Okay. But when we observe these data points, which contain, which are, which are the y values, which contain the noise that we cannot model, okay, we don't know that we cannot model that noise. So we use our hypothesis set, let's say the 10th order fit, to try to model that data instead of the target function. Okay. And we're going to output maybe something that looks like this. Okay, because it's fitting the data, which contains something we cannot model. We are trying to model something that we cannot model. And in the process, we produce junk. Okay, nonsense. Okay, so in trying to model the thing we cannot model, that's what leads the learning astray. And that's basically what overfitting is. Overfitting is when you see there's noise in the data, you try to model it, i.e. you try to fit that part of the data that you shouldn't try to fit because... You can't model it, so you're fitting the data more than is warranted because you're trying to fit what you cannot model, and then you produce something with huge out of sample error, something that's basically nonsense. So this is the result of the overfitting, which is led astray by the noise. Led astray by noise. Okay. And now you can see why the complexity of the hypothesis set, which is well, comes in, which is where, where people think of the traditional kinds of overfitting is that, oh, you know, your ability to do this kind of, you know, complicated fit to the data relies on your, the fact that your hypothesis set is complex. So it's easier to lead a complex hypothesis set astray than it is to lead a simpler hypothesis set astray. And hence, as the level of measurement noise in your data goes up, you should switch from the complex hypothesis set to the simpler, not because the simpler one has a better shot at approximating your target function, but because the simpler one has a less of a chance of being led astray by stochastic noise, which you cannot model. So by the, the fact that you cannot model is another way of saying it's going to lead you astray. Okay, so that's stochastic noise. Now let me show you the other source of noise. And this is the source of noise that many people will tend to ignore. And this is what leads to the very counterintuitive sort of advice that as your target function complexity is going up, go with the simpler hypothesis. I'm going to show you a very simple, I'm going to show you a very similar picture to that. And you'll be stunned at the similarity. So we're going to call this deterministic noise. Deterministic. Now, just before, before, before we go into, you know, deterministic noise, let me show you an example of stochastic noise and look at the elephants, okay? So there's the clean picture of the elephant and you can try to learn what an elephant is. And it's no surprise to you that if I showed you that very noisy picture of the elephant, it's going to be harder for you to, to learn what an elephant is. Because you're going to, you might get hung up on, you know, that, that, that black pixel on the top, you know, left. Okay. And that black pixel on the top left is just noise. And if there happens to be a black pixel on the top left for a hundred images, just by chance, okay, there's a black pixel on the top left where it shouldn't be because of noise, then you will, the, the machine learner will hone in on that, okay, and, you know, somehow fixate on the fact that black, black, black pixel in the top left is what make, makes an elephant an elephant, and it's complete nonsense. Now, a human has a very good ability to sort of, you know, simplify the right picture and extract the low-level pattern of the elephant. And, you know, it's important to ask, can we get a machine learner to do the same thing? Because when a human looks at the right picture, they say, yeah, 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 I can see there's noise there, but, you know, it's really underneath there, there's, there's an elephant. The machine learner, if left to itself, might hone in on the top left black pixel. Okay. Because that's what the data shows. Okay. Let's talk about deterministic noise, the other source of noise. Okay. And in, to, to, to illustrate, remember, the, the noise in general is the part of the y value you cannot model. Okay. 
So, in, in order to discuss deterministic noise, let us fix the hypothesis set. Fix the hypothesis set. Now, this is a new concept. Okay, we're all familiar with measurement error. Deterministic noise, isn't that an oxymoron? Watch! Okay, so fix the hypothesis. And let's draw a similar picture. Okay, but now I'm going to draw for you a super duper hyper complex target function. Because remember, I'm trying to unify those two, you know, nice colored uh, uh, pictures that are on the front page of our book. Okay, and on one of the pictures was showing you the dependence of the overfit measure on stochastic noise. And the other showed you um, the dependence of the overfit measure on the target complexity. So let's see what happens if you have a very complex target function. Okay. Now, you know, as a target function gets more and more complex, it's, 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 it's usually the case, and, with, and, and certainly the case, with a fixed hypothesis set H. Okay. And everyone tell me, why do we have a fixed hypothesis set H? part of the learning problem setup, right? You have to fix the hypothesis set before you look at the data. So you have a fixed hypothesis set H. Now, as you get a more and more complex target function, we can imagine, okay, that there is some best hypothesis in here that approximates the target function, not the data, the target function. Okay. So let me draw that as a, um, as a red curve. Okay, so imagine that, you know, your, your hypothesis set is limited, and so it may not have all this wiggliness capability. Okay, let's say it's second order polynomial or third or tenth or whatever. Remember, we did the tenth order polynomial versus the fiftieth order. So your fixed hypothesis set has a set of hypotheses. Let me, you know, heuristically illustrate that with, you know, the set of hypotheses. And one of them in here will be the best hypothesis. Okay, let's call this best hypothesis H star. Now, this has nothing to do with the data. Okay, this has nothing to do with the data. This is just, you know, given that this is the target function, this is the best hypothesis, H star. And let me draw what that might look like, because you've got a fixed hypothesis set and a very complex target function. This H star might look something like this. You know, because it's a simple hypothesis set relative to the target function. Because remember, we're looking at the target function with hypercomplexity. Okay, now let's play the same game. Let's play the same game. Okay, so you generate uh, a data point X for your data set. Okay, so you generate the data point X. And now let's see what is the Y value going to be. What is the Y value going to be? The Y value is going to be, in this example, it's going to be this guy here. Okay, so this is F of X. And we're considering the case with no noise now, no measurement error. You might think, well, what is the measurement? No measurement error. Okay, so this is F of X. So Y equals f of x. Wow, fantastic. That's very different from here. Right? Here we added measurement error. But I'm going to point out now okay, that, you know, is this a good target to learn from? Okay, and I'm going to point out that we can reformulate the goal of the learning as please produce for me h star. Why? Because H star is the best hypothesis in your hypothesis set. It is just the best. It's flat out the best. Forget about the data. It has nothing to do with the data. It is just the best hypothesis in your hypothesis set. So, you know, you would have accomplished the best you can accomplish. So the optimal outcome for your learning is H star. So the optimal outcome for your learning is H star. You cannot do any better because that's the best. Okay. So what is the best data point for you to learn from? The best data for point for you to learn from, if your goal is to output H star, the best data point to learn from is Y star is equal to H star of X. So you would much rather be given this data point, okay. not this data point. Right? Because, you know, imagine that you're, you're in, uh, we've reduced you to a target function that is within your capability, which is H star. And to learn that target function, you would much rather see the data point X, Y star equals H star of X. In other words, H star of X is what you can model. The target function is too complex for you. 
Okay, so if we define this as another kind of noise, that are deterministic noise, so this is, you can think of this as a noise, epsilon, okay, then y is equal to h star of x, what you can model, what you like to learn from, plus a perturbation, an epsilon. And this perturbation, from what you would like to output, is what we call the deterministic noise. Wow! Okay. And it has the same effect on learning. Now, why do I say that? Because you would like to output this red curve. But now you see a few data points that are in involving y, which has a part of the data, which, which, has a, which has a part that you cannot model. So you try to model those black data points. And if your model has sufficient flexibility, you might output, instead of this curve, this red curve, you might output this um, red curve, you know, okay, which is much worse. Okay. So the little bit of the target function that is beyond your capability is leading your learning astray, just like stochastic noise. That little bit of deterministic noise okay, is leading your learning astray. Now, why are we saying it's leading your learning astray? Because you cannot approximate it. You might as well go for the best thing that you can approximate. And that little bit of f that you cannot model is leading you away from h star. And in so doing, it actually ends up leading you away from f because h star is the best that you can do. So, if we look at this picture and, 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 and play the same game with all the possible values of x, you'll see that there's a part of f that you cannot model. Okay, And I'm shading in that part of f that you cannot model. You'd much rather see data from you know, this red h star of x, okay, but you don't have access to the data. Okay? And so this, this part of f that you cannot model, now you look at these two pictures and they're very similar. Okay? So, an excess complexity in the target function f has almost the same effect as a large amount of measurement noise. In both cases, they take you away, they lead you astray from what you would like to do, from what you can do. Okay. So this deterministic noise, noise, leads the learning astray. Now, there's a fundamental difference between the deterministic noise and the and the and the uh, the deterministic noise and the and the stochastic noise in that you know um, if you regenerated the same x point and a new y value in the in the stochastic noise case you'll get different y values the deterministic noise case you get the same y value so if you regenerated the same x point you'll get the same y value so deterministic noise that's why we call it deterministic noise it doesn't change. Uh, with different, with the same instance of x, but repeated generation of that data point. So hence the term deterministic noise. There's another very subtle difference between deterministic noise and stochastic noise. Stochastic noise leads to an, an a deficiency in the hypothesis set, okay, in, in being able to model y, no matter what your hypothesis set, because nobody can model the noise, random noise. But with deterministic noise, there's sort of an arms race. So you can think that if your hypothesis set gets more complex, then the deterministic noise will shrink. Okay? And so it seems, of, you know, if, you, if you make this sort of naive analysis, that in order to lower the deterministic noise, you should make your hypothesis set more and more complex. But there's a trade-off. Okay? Remember, what the noise is doing is leading your hypothesis set, leading your learning astray. And so that comes to bite you in the back when you make your hypothesis set, set more complex to reduce the level of deterministic noise, but the effect of the deterministic noise is more. So as your hypothesis set gets more complex, even a little bit of deterministic noise leads you far astray. So there's an arms race there, and that's a subtle trade-off, and, and, and another subtle difference between deterministic noise and stochastic noise. But as far as the learner is concerned, once you fix your hypothesis set, and once you've generated the data, the learner cannot tell the difference between stochastic noise and deterministic noise, because in both cases, it's a part of the y value that you cannot model. 
And in both cases, it leads you astray just the same. And here is an example of real world deterministic noise. You don't believe me? Look at this example. Okay. And have in the back of your mind that the ideal data point for me is x and the simplified h star of x as opposed to versus x and the more complex y, which is f of x. This is the ideal data point. Okay. That's the ideal data point. Okay. But we get the more complex data point, and we would learn much better if you could give me instead the simpler data point, the one that contains only the part that I can model. Okay. And so here's an example, you know, of learning, in, in human learning. Okay. And, you know, on the left, I show you that elephant again. Now we're trying to teach the two-year-old or the three-year-old what's an elephant. And so you scroll through the picture book of the three-year-old and you come to the thing on the right, which is called an elephant. And everyone and their mothers knows, including grandmothers and grandfathers and fathers and cousins, everyone knows that the thing on the right is not an elephant. You'll never see the thing on the right in the real world and call it an elephant. Okay. So why does the picture book have that guy, that simplified elephant? Mm. Because we have a simple hypothesis set. A three-year-old is trying to learn what an elephant is. And they have certain capabilities. And if you show them that complex thing, they're going to get led astray. You know, you've got elephant, it's got lines on the trunk, there's grass, all kinds of things that are leading the simple learner astray. And they learn much better from the simplified data point. The one that is h star of x. And from the simplified data point, they capture all the essence of the elephant. Okay? While ignoring the details. Okay? The big ears, the trunk, the tusks, the general heavy weightedness, and so on and so forth. Ignoring all the minute details. To appreciate the minute details, you need to become a much more complicated machine learner, a much more complicated hypothesis set, and you need much more data so that you don't get led astray from little, little deviations. So, um, noise is what leads learning astray. Okay. It comes in two forms, stochastic noise, measurement error. You can't do anything about measurement error. Deterministic noise is the part of the target function you cannot model. You can try to do something about deterministic noise, but you must be careful. There's a trade-off, there's an arms race. If you try to make your hypothesis set more complex to, to lower the deterministic noise, your hypothesis, your learning will be more likely to be read, to be led astray by much larger amounts. Okay, so there's this arms race. Okay, now when we come back, I'm going to show you, you know, how all of this sits within the bias variance decomposition that we talked about. Okay, and then we'll, we'll sort of summarize. So let's erase. Switch off the slides. <laughs>